Thank you very much for this introduction. And at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Professor Majumdar, Dr. Vashne, who had been actually uh, agree, who had ag agreed to allow me to speak here in, uh, as a representative of Professor Painful, who could not make it here to the meeting. And um, what I uh, plan to do today is to give an outline of, uh, give a gist of what the group does at the, at the Department of Genetics in South Campus. As the, as, as the title says, we have work on uh, disease resistance in mustard. The group is actually, uh, oilseed mustard is one of the most important oilseed crops of India. India is the third largest producer of mustard oil. And in India, we have about 5 million hectares of uh, land under cultivation for mustard. But still, we have a deficit, a huge deficit of edible oil in India. And there is a quite a great potential of increasing the yield of mustard in Indian, under Indian scenario. Uh, Indian um, mustard yield is more or less, yield potential is more or less half of what has been achieved worldwide. And uh, one of the, some of the reasons, or one of the major reasons behind uh, reduced yield is because of major uh, disease lo losses due to diseases. Uh, we work on, there are three major diseases of uh, uh, mustard. One is white rust, which is caused by a fungus, an oomycete called albugo candida. Another disease, important disease is alternaria leaf blight caused by a fungal pathogen alternaria brassicae. And stem rot, which is now more recently coming up, emerging as a major uh, disease in the Indian scenario because of our changes, changing in the cultural practices as well as the changes in the environment or the climate change that we talk about so often. So we, we work on all the three of these uh, diseases in, in our group. And uh, today what I will do it would be mainly focus on white trust and towards the second half of the talk I will try to uh, give you an overview of what we have achieved with alternaria blight. Um, majority of the times the diseases are being tackled using fungicides as Dr. Podle, uh, Professor Vodler also mentioned but these fungicides are inconsistent in their response. Besides inconsistency, they are expensive and as we all know, they have negative or detrimental effects on the environment. So the best thing to do for disease improvement would be exploit the genetic variation that exists within the crop species towards for improving the resistance. And in case of Brassica, there are three major diversity or gene pools that we know of. These are East European gene pool, the Chinese gene pool and the Indian gene pool. And today I will talk about how we have improved white rust resistance using the resistance, existing resistance present in these three germ pools. Uh, to, to just to give you a, a broad view, uh, white rust or albu uh, white rust caused by albugo candida is actually uh, can be seen in the northern, northern India majority of the time, in most of the times and we have isolates collected from these different regions with the help of uh, Professor um, Tiwari at uh, Panthanagar University. Now, albugo candida is a obligate biotrophic host. Basically, it means that it keeps the pathogen, it keeps the host alive as it grows and completes its life cycle on the uh, host. It can infect either in the vegetative or in the reproductive phases. And in both the phases, it can cause drastic losses. In the vegetative phases, you can see postules on the leaves and stems being formed. Whereas if, if the infection happens at the later stages, like the reproductive stages, the entire inflorescence is infected and it actually forms a stag head. So there is no seed production in this case. So you can actually see there's a complete loss of uh, yield if the infection happens at a reproductive stage. Overall, 20 to 60% yield losses in India have been reported just because of white rust. So these uh, different geographical uh, isolates collected from different parts of India were tested and we tested different um, reference lines of Brassica juncia. Now these are all and in the, in the uh, in, so this is uh, the Indian germ pool, the East European germ pool and the Chinese germ pool. And what you can see very nicely is that in the Indian germ pool there is no resistance against these this disease. All the, enti the entire Indian germ pool is susceptible 
and they all the cultivated species that we have, uh, cultivated varieties of brassica that we have in India, they are all susceptible. Whereas the East European germ pool has, and as well as the Chinese germ pool has the resistance, and that is what we want to capture and you uh, utilize improving the Indian germ pool. So now, if you look at this uh, the, this line. You can see this is actually showing resistance against all the isolates that have been collected from different areas of India. So this becomes a very interesting gene pool from where you would like to isolate and identify and isolate the resistance conferring gene and introduce it into different Indian germ pools. So um, how did we do this? We have actually since we know that uh, Downskaza, this uh, isolate Downskaza is actually imparting a, a very broad spectrum resistance. We used this uh, to make a cross with the Indian germ pool and using a made a F1 population. From the F1 we made a di uh, di double haploid population and used this segregating double haploid population to map where the gene, ref, gene or uh, locus ref, uh, conferring resistance of, appears and you can see that what we were lucky with was that there is only one gene which confers resistance to, uh, uh, to Duncia. Using this, uh, using 383 different uh, polymorphic markers we could act and using about 100 uh, uh, a mapping population of 100, we, we used a genotype phenotype correlation to identify this locus. Additionally, we made another mapping, uh, another um, population where you could, where, you, you, where we used another East European uh, line to introduce, uh, to I, I isolate the um, resistance locus, resistance conferring locus. And another third population was made using the Chinese germ pool to identify. This was done more recently, and here also we identified a uh, new. Uh, uh, resistance conferring locus and these three resistance conferring locus are no novel locus which can actually can be now used to impart resistance to a, a can be introduced into the Indian germ pools. So we have labeled we have named them as WRR1, 2 and 3 and these have now I will just discuss about WRR1 as how we have cloned this gene and what this gene is about. Um, to identify what this uh, what gene is present in this locus that is conferring resistance, we have actually made a back library from Downskaza. Downskaza is the resistant parent. So you make a back library from the entire uh, Downskaza genome and then we screen this library with the tightly linked markers from the flanks. And we identified one back clone which could actually, which had both the markers, we were lucky enough where both the markers were present within the same back clone. This back clone was sequenced and then gene annotated. We could actually see 28 ORFs within this region. Now interestingly, as Dr. Podolis just said, there are surface markers present, receptors which present, which are, uh, which are recognizing the PAMPs. Similarly, there are intracellular marker receptors present which will recognize another mole molecule, special molecule which the pathogen secretes. these are called as effectors. Now these intracellular uh, receptors, uh, one of these ORFs were actually coding for this intracellular receptor. There were other proteins as well within these 28 uh, ORFs that we identified which also were involved directly or indirectly in disease resistance. But we thought that initially that we should test only one of them which was actually coding for a um, intracellular receptor. This codes for a receptor which belongs to a NBS LRR class of receptors. This is a very common class of receptors which is uh, present across all the plant species and this, this, this NBS belongs to a class which has CC or the coil coil domain at the end terminal. So when this uh, cloned gene which encodes for 912 amino acids was introduced into the susceptible Indian gene pool Varuna, what we could see was that you could actually wherever you see uh, the gene present you could see that resistance was um, conferred and wherever the uh, gene is missing there was susceptibility. Therefore this, therefore this was one of the proof of uh, proof to functional validation of this gene that this is the receptor which was responsible for imparting resistance. Additionally, what we also did was we had actually 
tested this these transgenics against all the isolates that we have identified or I, uh, we have collected and these transgenics give us resistance not only against uh, the most uh, virulent isolate but across all the isolates that, that has been so far tested with within, in the lab. So this is a very good uh, promising uh, gene that should be utilized for improving this disease resistance. Um, we also tried to look at the allelic variation that existed within the, of this gene within the uh, within different uh, lines of brassica and you can see this is the gene from Donskaza. this was used as a reference. This is another very uh, East European line which is highly resistant and here you can see different um, deletions and there is also a truncation at the end but still we do not know whether this is a functional gene or this is a non-functional gene this needs to be tested further. But if you look at the other accessions you see there is a lot of the blue lines are showing you the synonymous changes and the red lines are showing you the non-synonymous changes. You can see so many non-synonymous changes have been accumulated here. So we think that most probably these are the non-functional copies but unless you test it out you may not really know. We have indirect hint that these are non-functional um, non copies because in um, this locus for example in uh, the cross between Hira and Varuna the susceptible variety did not come up as a uh, so as a resistance imparting locus. So therefore this gene from HERA which is otherwise susceptible is non-functional. Um, we also looked at orthologs of this gene in different brassica as well as related species like Arabidopsis, Arabidopsis saliana, Arabidopsis lyrita and so on. And what we find is that you can actually see three different kinds of haplotypes. One the Arabidopsis Thaliana, Arabidopsis lyrata and so on, they do not have this gene at all. Although the rest of the syntony within the region is maintained. Whereas in case of these you can see there is one copy of the gene which, which where some of them have pseudogenes or there are just remnants of this gene existing in this. Whereas in case of the third haplotype what you see is that there are multiple copies of these genes in, available. Now it is quite possible that these or some of these orthologs might also be functional and they might also be they might be imparting resistance either to the same spectrum of uh, isolates or even broader spectrum of isolates. Now that would be interesting to test out and if you get something which gives you a broader spectrum resistance it would be interesting to then utilize that for improving the Indian germ pool. Uh, moving on to the other gene that I talked about which we cloned from the Chinese uh, germ pool. Here uh, we could narrow down the region to 710 k, uh, KB region. Now both Tumida, the Chinese uh, germplasm as well as the Varuna germplasm has been, uh, the genome has been sequenced. We had the sequence information so we and the annotated genes were there so we actually looked at the different genes that are present within this region. There were around 60, 50 genes present for Tumida and around 63 genes present in Varuna. And you see there is only one CCNBS type of gene which was similar which is uh, present in this region. And we, we our, our guess is that this is most probably the gene that is similar to the WRR1 which we had earlier isolated from Gonskasa and this is something similar to that which is also imparting resistance in the Chinese germplasm tumida. So um, again the similar kind of thing we did and what we try what we see here is that this is the tumida gene which again codes for the same N, the CC and BSLRR domain the intracellular receptor. The full length protein which is functional in tumida is encoding for 919 amino acids whereas the rest of these actually show us different alleles. Now here there is an interesting thing if you see the Indian germ pool has one kind of allelic polymorphisms whereas the East European germ pool has a different kind. But all of these other than tumida the Chinese one they have the truncations in it so they are not producing the functional protein here. So this is the second gene we could uh, isolate. And again, if you look across in different uh, in different uh, brassica, brassica lines, you can actually see that these are present in multiple copies. Somewhere they are present as three copies or a single copy or two copies and so on. Now again, this, is, this gives us a repertoire of uh, orthologs. These orthologs are repertoire of these uh, CCNBS kind of genes which can now be tested for whether they are functional A and if they are functional what is the spectrum and if the spectrum is broad enough these can also be introduced into the Indian germ pool. 
to bring about resistance. So um, interestingly what we also found when you try to compare different uh, CC and BS kind of uh, genes what you see is that these two so the, we have Arabidopsis uh, CC and BS kind of uh, genes from Arabidopsis as well as from Brassica juncia. And what you see here is that these two genes that we have identified WRR1 and WRR2 they are phylogenetically very similar to each other and they have been it, it could be whereas the other genes of Arabidopsis which lie in this clade they are also uh, imparting resistance and these are imparting resistance to another rheumycete which is which causes downy mildew. So we are pretty uh, interested we are pretty excited about these and uh, what has so what would be the implication of this? We would like to now introgress these disease, disease resistance genes into the Indian varieties. So this work has been done. So I will just summarize what I say I have spoken so far about white rust resistance. We have identified three new novel loci conferring resistance to white rust, which has on uh, four on three different chromosomes, uh, uh, the linkage group A4, A5, and A6. A5 is the one which is conferring, which encodes for WRR1 which confers resistance against broad spectrum uh, 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 different isolates which have been collected from different geographical regions of India. And this is one of the most interesting one because it will give you a broad spectrum resistance wherever you grow it in India. So both A5 and A4 loci, so since we have already mapped these loci and they, they were uh, markers that were uh, tightly associated with this, therefore these genes could be transferred into Indian varieties, four Indian varieties like Pusa Jekasan, Pusa Bol, Varna Rohini using marker bre assisted breeding. And these uh, improved varieties have now been handed over to eight different companies for further pro production as well as it has been uh, given to ICAR for seed production and also its incorporation into, um, in, into their breeding programs. So, um, so far what I spoke about is the story about white trust which is caused by an obligate pathogen. Now I am shift gears and talk about another pathogen, another disease of Brassica which uh, is caused by Alternaria Alternaria Brassici which is a necrotrophic pathogen. Now we don't really know that the, in case of a biotrophic pathogen you have a gene for gene relationship. There is a uh, resistance gene and there is a cognate effector gene. But unfortunately for a, alter, for a necrotrophic pathogen no such reports are available although there are some reports which are coming up. So in this scenario um, Alternaria brassicae causes diseases and it also causes yield losses about 10 to 70 percent. Now unfortunately in the all the cultivated brassica species that, that exist in India and abroad there is no source of resistance available. Now in this scenario when there is no source of resistance available we had to take an alternate approach. We actually started screening for resistance in Arabidopsis. We have actually taken 124 different excessions of Arabidopsis, tested, their, tested them for the response to Alternaria brassicae. And now you can see what kind of a variation you see. You have, a, you have this across the spectrum which shows extreme susceptibility versus no susceptibility at all. That is total resistance. Now, use, now this is a very good system which actually provides me a handle to dissect out at the genetic level what is what are the um, uh, what are the factors that would be involved in disease resistance especially for against this. Uh, what I mean by plants present at this spectrum versus this spectrum you can see that these are the plants which do not show any symptom and these are the plants which show you extreme susceptibility. Now using these this panel now Arabidopsis has, has a huge amount of genomic data available, genetic tools available to do this dissection and we utilize that and you took two approaches. One is the biparental QTL mapping approach and the other is the genome wide association mapping approach. I will just quickly go through this to just give you an idea about what we have understood from these uh, from Arabidopsis regarding alternaria blight. So using a mapping uh, using uh, association mapping approach what we tried doing was we had actually used um, the available 2,005, uh, 2,50,000 SNP information that is existing for these 124 accessions and 
associate and try to do an association uh, genotype phenotype association where we could actually see that there was a, there were there were many loci which were actually showing uh, associated with resistance now di using different uh, methods of uh, association we actually finally figured out that there are common uh, loci which are exist which are associating with resistance across different methods and i will just give you one example of of these we have tried one tested a, a couple and we can sh i can show share with you that this is one gene which is coding for uh, cytochrome p450 now this cytochrome p450 is already known to be involved in conversion of a 20 carbon uh, substrate into a terpene <coughs> it's a homoterpene which is 16 carbon now this homoterpene is already in, a, in literature known to be associated with indirect herbivory resistance as well as stimulated by fungal strikers and this has actually appeared in our our uh, screen as our association uh, uh, as well so when we actually try to do was we actually got mutants for this gene and when you see the mutants here what you see this is a mutant we validated that these mutants are null and when when you compare the mutants with the with the wild type you see there's a loss of resistance now that means either this tmtt the terpene that is being produced is directly uh, toxic for the for the pathogen and there thereby does not allow the pathogen to grow when this exists there or alternatively what we also think that as it is a uh, p450 uh, cytochrome oxidase it can actually be involved in detoxification of the fungal toxins as well so this way i would i would not get into more we had other candidates as well which have actually shown us promising results additionally for the qtl what we did we have actually done a qtl mapping which has revealed us uh, two different loci just as what we did for brassica in this case also we took three different resistant accessions crossed them to susceptible accessions and we have generated three different mapping populations now evaluating three different mapping populations for the three different mapping populations for the phenotype what we have figured out is that there are the disease is the disease is basically a quantitative trait you can see there are multiple uh, loci which are associated with resistance now interesting thing that comes out of this is this, that if you look across carefully you can actually see in three different accessions resistant accessions you actually can find the same locus appearing again and again now but additionally what is also interesting is you can also see another locus which is a major locus so in this population this locus which was common locus is a minor locus and the other locus has become a major locus now what we feel is that a the arabidopsis the alternaria resistance is not as simple as um, the albugo resistance where there is gene for gene interaction this is more complex it is quantitative trait it is also that it's not just that 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 is also supported by the data that we just saw from the uh, association mapping but what more interesting thing is or more com what makes it more complex is that we hypothesize that resistance may be mediated by a few common genes which interact with the accession specific factors and thus provide us resistance so it would not be that easy as in case of albugo to dissect it out but it would still be worthwhile to find out what are the common genes it will be very interesting to find this what is this gene locus we are fine mapping this region and it seems to be a susceptibility factor which is good for us because then we can actually try looking at it and modifying it in our in brassica itself because then you can do a crispr and knock it down and see what what response you get in brassica so i'll summarize this alternaria part as well um, we have been able to establish the pathosystem in the lab and we have gained insights into this saying that the genetic architecture for resistance to alternaria is multigenic both gwas as well as biparental mapping points to the same thing we have identified some candidate genes it will be now interesting to identify the candidate gene the common candidate gene which is present across all of this so what I, in the crux of the matter i would say that we have been able to look at two different diseases if for albugo we have now sufficient number of resistance genes 
which can be utilized in the improving brassica uh, in India. And whereas in case of Alton area, we have started to gain some insights into how the disease resistant or how the plant and pathogen interact. And uh, at the end, just to give a contribution, uh, just to acknowledge, uh, this is all under the guidance of Professor Deepak Paintle. And Y Trust work has been totally done under his guidance and he is a supervisor. Whereas the Alton area work that I just described, it is uh, it, it done in my lab, which I uh, share with Professor Paintle under his guidance. And most of the work done for Alton area was done by uh, Shiva Subramaniam, whereas the TA, whereas for Y Trust, the cloning was done by Hina and Latika Thank you very much for your attention.